Warning, the following video contains explicit language which may be offensive to some viewers or inappropriate for children. The content within this video is intended for mature audiences only. Hello and welcome back. Today's pod, uh, Rabbits Podcast breakdown video is going to be for Season 1, Episode 4, Dog Lover in Hell, Part 1. So without further ado, let's get into it. We're ready when you are. Do you believe your friend was playing rabbits? rabbits? She started seeing mysterious men in gray. What did she ask you? She asked me how many steps to the lighthouse. chaos there. The streets were red, then black with blood. 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 That sounds poetic. Where are you now? The bottom line isn't money or purpose. It's inspiration. Are we still going to have sex? I'm afraid not. She believed Hazel killed Emily Masters. Maybe later. For sure, later. I first heard about the game shortly after my best friend, Yumiko Takata, disappeared. I started this podcast because I want to find out what happened to my friend. From the Public Radio Alliance and Minnow Beats Whale, you're listening to Rabbits. I'm Carly Parker. Stay with us. Okay, so before we get to the coffee shop incident from our last episode, a quick update from the police. I brought everything I had on Yumiko into the detective who had been assigned to the case, but I quickly realized that she wasn't going to respond well to my telling her about paintings that appeared to change and impossible photographs. Which, to be fair, most law enforcement officers don't. They don't, their training and their job does not include think, thinking outside the box. So, rather than assault her with my mounting pile of strange occurrences, I asked her if they'd been able to dig up anything new on Yumiko's case. They had nothing. She assured me that somebody would get in touch with the family. She stressed the word family if and when they found anything. She asked me to get in touch if Yumiko contacted me. I got the feeling they were stretched pretty thin resource-wise, and I still suspected they believed she'd taken off on her own. I knew Yumiko's brother Adam would get in touch the minute he heard anything from them, but still, I felt like I needed to remind the police about Yumiko. I wanted finding my friend to be a priority for them, it was priority number one for me. As most things like that are, when you have a connection to somebody who's been lost, kidnapped, run away, or what have you, it's just kind of a normal state of mind. Now, back to what happened at the end of our last episode. I entered that coffee shop believing I was there to meet Jones. It turns out, I wasn't. At least, not exactly. Hey, 
I sat down and waited, and as you heard last time, my phone's audio recorder was running. About ten minutes after I'd arrived, the twenty or so patrons in the coffee shop suddenly cleared out, very quickly. It was strange. Yeah, um, I think I'd be freaked out too if I went into some place was there for about 10 minutes and everybody in the place got up and left. I'm um, not going to lie about that. The place was bustling and two minutes later, silence. Even the guy behind the counter was gone. Maybe to the back room or something. I should also clarify something began interfering with my phone at this point. The audio recording became unusable static. It was really creepy. Yeah, see, that would freak me out, too. Um, and not knowing if there's any kind of surveillance or jamming devices or anything anywhere, and all of a sudden it just, boom, quits. That would bother the crap out of me. After the people left, I got up and stepped outside to call Jones, but, like I mentioned, my phone wasn't working. That's when I saw the two figures dressed in grey, walking toward me on the sidewalk, one on each side. That's never good. I don't know how to explain it, but something didn't feel right. I can't remember if they were male or female. It was strange. The yeah, sometimes you just have to go with your gut feeling on things. The image of Harry Potter's Dementors popped into my head, which wasn't good. I couldn't move. I was frozen in place. I just wonder how many people over the age of 45 get the Harry Potter reference. Just a curiosity of mine. Maybe it was the situation or the intensity of the two figures, but... Well, it was weird. It didn't feel like supernatural or anything. It was more deer in the headlights with an overwhelming sense of, not fear, but more like inevitability. Yes, when presented with a fight or flight problem, her instincts or her Fight and fl her fight or flight um, response um, didn't kick in. She went all deer in the headlights. I didn't have anywhere to go to get away from them. The whole scene reminded me more of a movie than real life. I felt like I was watching myself, standing there, waiting. I've had that experience. Um, just a little bit of background. I spent 25 years of my life working as a corrections officer. And that whole feeling of intensity, yeah, that's that, that can definitely cause deer in the headlights. But somehow you have to overcome it. At that moment, just before the two figures were about to converge on me, a dozen kids on skateboards rolled towards me in an exuberant, youthful roar of life. I'm not sure how, but they managed to pull me along with them. It all happened in a blur. A few seconds later, we'd moved at least a block down the street, and all of the kids were gone but one. He pulled back his hoodie. He wasn't a kid. He was about 5'11", dark hair, leather cafe racer style motorcycle jacket over a very thin dark gray hoodie. He had deep blue eyes and a bit of stubble. He had a funny crooked tooth, but yeah, he wasn't bad looking at all. This is when Jones introduced himself, which you heard last episode. He pulled me into an alley through a doorway, down a hallway, back onto another street, and finally, onto the back of a black Honda motorcycle. 
see something like that I don't think I would be near as calm as she was even describing it at a later date I think if something like that happened to me, I would be totally freaked. Ten minutes later, we were at my place. Okay, so that happened. Yeah. What's going on? Who were those people in gray? How did they know you called to meet me there? Ah, uh, well, first of all, what's going on? That's going to take a while. I've got time. I don't. At least not right now. As far as who those people were, I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure they were in-game participants. There's a small chance they may have been wardens. Like the scary wardens from Rabbit's Wardens? Yes. Have you ever seen a warden? No. Nobody has since six. Are they really dangerous? And as to your third question, I didn't call to meet you. Sorry, text. I didn't text. I didn't set up any meeting. Yes, and that's kind of within the realm of possibility because of cell phone spoofing and stuff like that, which are real world things, which are that hackers and stuff do. Um, I personally have never done it, but I've witness people doing it it's kind of way out there it's kind of it's interesting how it gets done see your phone your number your text i told you i was no longer using that phone so what somebody texted me to meet them from an old number that you no longer use yes that's why i believe those two may have actually been participants i have to believe the wardens wouldn't interfere so directly at least not at this point what do you mean? If they were wardens, they probably wouldn't be here now. What the hell is going on? What do you think? You're playing rabbits. As that comes to, a sh to be a shock to her, I guess. Um, so. I'm not. I didn't sign up for anything. That's not how it works. Well... If I am playing rabbits, and I'm not saying I am... Okay. Can I stop playing if I want to? Yes. But you're not going to. What makes you say that? Nobody ever stops. What do you mean? Are you telling me that you're really just willing to let it go? Stop searching for your missing friend? I didn't say I was going to stop looking for you, Miko. Only that I'm not playing some game. See, this is where the realization of the magnitude and scope of rabbits comes in. You think the two things aren't related? I don't know what I'm saying, but yes, I can look for you, Miko, and not take part in some weird ancient alternate reality game. Can't I? Nope. I don't think you can. You believe you've been investigating two things. Yumiko's disappearance, and the game known as Rabbits. Yes. What if those two things are one thing? What one thing? The game. This conversation is starting to feel a bit elliptical. If you think this is elliptical, hang on. You ain't seen nothing yet. And Jones is completely right there. So... If I'm playing rabbits, and I'm not saying that I believe I am. Right, but you are. If I'm playing, what can I win? Do I find you, Miko? Is she okay? Do I become a secret agent? Maybe. I don't know. No idea. If you win the game, you get a place in the circle. The rest is just... speculation. That's it? What about you, Miko? I'm not sure place in the circle. That's the thing most participants care about. Why would I care about that? You probably don't. So why play? For Yumiko. That's me, but why would somebody else play? Besides the circle? Yes. The money? The chance to become a secret agent, perhaps? The obscure notoriety? Right. 
Because there's supposed to be an answer at the end. An answer to what? An answer to everything. Life. The universe and everything. Douglas Adams. Very sly Douglas Adams reference. I love it. Is there really an answer? That's the rumor. I heard another rumor. Okay. I've heard that people die playing rabbits. I've heard that one too. You've been back to see the police. How do you know that? Did they tell you anything new? No. Did they tell you that other people have been disappearing after watching strange videos or chatting with strangers online? No. What are you talking about? There's been chatter. But a bunch of other disappearances all over the world. What chatter? I haven't heard anything. Well, you're... You're not exactly plugged into the types of places to hear that kind of chatter. Is there any connection to Yumiko? I believe there is. Do the authorities believe these disappearances are connected? No chance. They're too spread out, too disparate. And that is the brilliance of the game. What makes you think they're connected? I believe that these people disappeared under similar circumstances to your friend, strange videos, hidden clues. Strangers who appear in real life after somehow remotely installing a chat app on your computer? I'm on your side. Yeah? Yeah. And he actually is. Okay. So do people all over the world normally disappear while playing the game? Normally? Not like this, no. How did you know I'd be at that coffee shop? I had somebody keeping an eye on you. What? Why? They noticed somebody following you. They just noticed? Yes. Who was following me? Those skateboard kids? One of them, yes. Is anybody following us now? No. Does that mean we're safe? Nope. Jones? Hey everyone, my name is Terry Miles, and as most of you probably know, I'm the founder of the Public Radio Alliance and cousin to Nick Silver. A lot of people think Nick and I... So, what we got so far is Carly and Jones basically coming into, build, or I should say building, an alliance with each other and it's and it's infancy so that looks like it's going good maybe maybe not maybe maybe not you never know actually you will later on later episodes but it is what it is Check the Rabbits podcast feed for a three-episode miniseries called The Path, A Rabbit Story. And remember, if you're interested in the Rabbits novel, you can find it anywhere books are sold or visit terrymiles.com for more information. Let's get back into it. We ordered some Thai food and shared a six-pack. I suddenly realized just how alone I'd been feeling since Yumiko's disappearance. It was nice to have an... I don't know what to call Jones. We spoke about a lot of stuff, mostly unrelated to rabbits, which was nice. But, of course, things eventually came back around to that subject. I've heard that Alan Scarpio won money playing an underground game. He came to prominence around 1988, which, if this is true and he was playing rabbits, that would make him... Californiac. Yeah. It's understood in certain circles that Alan Scarpio is Californiac. You know for sure. Nobody knows any of the winner's identities for certain. Why are people convinced Alan Scarpio is Californiac? Because when he drinks, he likes to talk. Oh. 
Seems likely that the winners of Rabbits receive some type of employment or financial or other form of compensation, but it's all just speculation and hearsay. If the rumors are true, and Alan Scarpio is Californiac, it must have been a significant amount of compensation. If the rumors are true, then yes, it probably was. So, okay. Are we safe here? Are they going to come after me again? If they'd known you lived here, they probably would have met you here. They must have seen you at that coffee shop at some point, I don't know. I've been there a few times. That's probably how they found you. So, what now? Now? We go see the magician. The magician? Yeah. We'll go ahead and call the video good here. Um, yeah, the magician is... I wanted to go ahead go ahead in the video here because the magician it's just he's one of my favorite supporting characters in this whole thing um he shows up in the novel and plays a fairly prominent role in the novel so um i think that's why i like him so much is because his role in the rabbit's novel is that much more and he, uh, the stakes around him in the novel are, are a whole lot heavier than they are in, in the podcast. So we'll go ahead and I'll leave you here. Until next time, peace.